This video is brought to you in part by Badly Drawn Death. Black Dragon Miniatures. Their website today at Black Dragon Miniatures. What up guys and welcome back to Bleep Top Productions and again I'm joined by my good friend James Hall from JH Miniatures and we're bringing some more collaboration stuff for you for, for Gaslands and today is a little bit special I think because this is a series we want to do because we re I realise there's a lot of videos out there that say you can do this but we want to take a stab at that as well because we've already done battle reports thank you very much for all your comments and all the mistakes we did much appreciated but like we say on this channel, we make mistakes so you don't have to. So obviously when you're seeing this, uh, if you left a comment on the Gaslands Facebook page, which um, you should have if you wanted to be a part of this episode, we will be, um, we'll answer your questions. And obviously when you're watching this and you want to be on the next one, leave a comment in the, this video on YouTube for the next episode. We just want to do uh, something like this where it can benefit you guys as well, learning techniques as well, because I'm completely, I can say, a noob to building stuff. So you'll see my progression on the show. And James, we'll just see your evolution continue, because you're, I'm not going to brown nose him too much, but his builds, well, bro, just, just, break, break my mind when I'm just like, what the heck is that? What we're going to do is uh, we've bought a few cars. Um, uh, we're going to show, show off uh, what our projects we're going to try and start. Uh, some of the inspirations we want to do, and some some of the uh, some of the arts and crafts stuff that we're using. So obviously, if you're just starting out in Gaslands or anything like that, this is possibly the perfect uh, jumping on point. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're new to it and you're like, oh, I don't know where I can get this or how I can do that, this is the video for you. So I'm going to learn as much as you guys are out there. One of my favourite movies growing up was Back to the Future. Now the first thing you could have done is buy the Hot Wheels, you lovely DeLorean. So all you had to do was just dirty it up and just make it, you know, Gaslands ready. So I wanted to make one completely from scratch. So I got this one from Hot Wheels. I think it was off eBay for like two quid and it was like a racing DeLorean, um, which I'm pretty happy with. It's basically got stuff that I can just rip out and basically make it a um, Back to the Future car. That's all I really think about it. But as you can see, it's just, um, it's just your bog standard DeLorean. Uh, and my ideas are to make the doors possibly not move, but uh, make the doors unique, as in they have those butterfly doors, don't they, DeLorean? So they're yeah. very, very cool. Go on. I really want to work on the street wiener. Do, <laughs> do, just do it, just do it. I really want to work on... All right, there you this go. This bad boy. <laughs> so this is um, this lovely car. Um, it's... Oh God, how to, how to explain it? It's a bit of a homage to the old um, Twisted Metal Black and Carmageddon video games. But it is completely ludicrous because you're driving a giant hot dog on wheels. There's this great little um, door at the back that opens up that I think would be pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting one. But like I said, there's a perfect little seat for a guy to sit in and I think I've got the guy to fit in there. Um, my last one, I think we're going to talk about because yeah. both of us bought this without knowing. Yeah. Um, are you a huge Batman fan? I am a bit of a Batman fan. You are a bit yeah. Batman I, fan. I, I think it's safe to say I, I like the uh, the DC universe film. Okay, because as, as the video, like the as the unsubscribers. Yeah, there we go. Like, like, I'm a huge DC fan. Everyone knows from yeah. from the wrecked podcast. I am a, the bi comical man. I love all types of comic books. And I've, I've gone a bit old school. I, I went with the the Batmobile car from the animated series what paid homage to Tim Burton's uh, car in the 1980s Batman. I've gone fully modern with the Justice League Batmobile. Yeah. Including turret mounted cannon <laughs> that is so a Batman thing. Right? I know, yeah. I don't like using guns, but yeah, I have guns on my car. We're going to move on into like the next kind of segment where we want to basically talk about stuff that we're going to be using today, which obviously you guys can do uh, at any point um, when you go online and research bits and bobs and stuff like that. 
When I first started out, I basically hauled James, no pun intended, with that comment about how, what is this behind you've used? How have you done this? How have you done that? And then he basically was like, well, it's this, 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 and this. Yeah. So what I wanted to do with this first video is we're going to start building some cars towards the end of the video, but what we wanted to talk about was the ideas and the products that you can find out there. Because, you know, the internet is a vast place and you can easily see money escaping your wallet. One of the main things I want to talk about first is a great little company called Green Stuff World. Now, Green Stuff World do a lot of arts and crafts stuff. Um, as you can probably tell, James and me have a lot of arts and crafts stuff in front of us. Now, what they these guys do, they literally have everything that you need for plastic art. Now, when it comes to a normal build, from what I can tell, is you need plastic art if you want to do any kind of like modifications. This stuff is ideal. So we've got some uh, grated metal stuff as well. Uh, so basic stuff that you can buy is just obviously the plain stuff, which isn't a problem. Uh, but James and me have kind of gone up a little bit more because we have the ABS diamonds, which basically are, you know, your rivet, your metal surfaces that you might see at a factory or whether you see it at an oil rig, etc., or, or anything like that. We went all out with them. But James also bought some other little bits and bobs as well. So I'll let James talk about um, some of the other bits because obviously he's just got loads of plastic card and stuff. But the other things you can get from uh, uh, Green Stuff World. It's almost like a, a whole video in itself because there's so many materials and and bits and bobs you can pick up that, that lead to a whole world of different techniques and, and car building and, and it's insane, like the, the rabbit hole never ends. Anyone who's ever made like a Warhammer Fantasy miniature or a 40k army can tell you like if you're trying to scratch build something that the amount of possibilities that are out there now is, is insane. And that's not a bad thing, it no. just means sometimes you need to put your feet on the ground and yeah, get, <laughs> get a sense of, of where you should go first and what you should do. Now, yeah. one of the easiest things I find is just holding this giant, giant pile, pile of, of, of plastic card, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you go on, on eBay or Amazon or even some of the specialist websites like Hatton, um, you can find bundles of plastic cards. So rather than trying to guess, oh, do I need this thickness or that thing? Is it 0.1 of a millimeter or, or two millimeters or da, da, da? They will just send you like five or ten sheets ranging from 0.1 all the way up to two millimeters. So all of a sudden you don't have to worry about you know getting something that's too thick or getting something that's like paper thin. Mm. It's all just you know there in a bundle which makes life so much easier. Um, this is a car body repair mesh that you can get from Halfords here in the UK or pretty much any auto shop in, yeah. in America, I, I imagine. Mm. Um, and it's the correct size, it's the correct width to really make, like in, in other games you'd make chain link fences out of it. Yeah, you would, yeah. You'd make like improvised armour, but in, in Gasland you can do, use it to make like meshed screens over windows and things like that. Another one I love is one that tends to get overlooked quite a bit, Yes. Which are actually, of all things, crochet sheets yeah. for like grannies and people who knit and do that kind of stuff. I've never crocheted in my life, but if you want just like a gridded plastic that mm. you can just cut and stick down and make like a wonderful floor texture, yeah. it's the best way to go. And you it can is. find it just any store that sells like wool or crafts accessories, they sell this stuff. Just, just go out there and look for it. Yeah, know? it's 100% true. I've, I've used them multiple times when I was doing my Colossal Mania boards, which you guys have probably seen on this channel. Um, if with the right paint job, it can make it look like metal. It's fantastic. The last thing I'd say um, would be the magical world of little strips, strips of plastic and and I beams and tubes and you name it. So, so what's the deal with these? Well, they're great for making exhausts. They're great for making gun barrels. Um, it just comes down to how much detail you want to put into your build. You can get these wonderful bundles that just, they contain one of each of the different thicknesses of tube and rod, and there you go. You don't have to worry about getting like five of a certain thickness or only two of this one, or if it's the wrong size, like, it's all just there. So you just you can just jump straight in. You can start playing with the cars. Yeah, that's what it's about. exactly it. And, and the I think the best thing that um, I think this series will talk about is like, um, 
not everyone is perfect. You will see people with amazing builds, I think, and you're just kind of like, oh, I don't know where to start. I think that with Gaslands and how the whole universe is based, not everyone is a brilliant engineer. Not everyone is the greatest welder. So your cars will always look unique. I think the one thing sometimes, I know for me personally as well, is I always think I'm too much of a perfectionist. So if it isn't great, I'm just like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I need to go back and do something again. But with Gaslands, I think I can make a mistake and be like, oh yeah, that's fine. And it'll probably be pointed out maybe if we ever go to a tournament or anything like that. It's like, why is it like that? And I'm just like, my guys aren't great engineers. They can't fabricate things. They found this on the back of a lorry somewhere. I've seen, I've seen cars turn around in a day and I'm just like, holy crap, that's really cool. And then you've seen cars that have taken like, you know, a couple of weeks and then you're just like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. But you can see why they took their time with it. So it's all good in the hood. So uh, with that being said, shall we crack on with yes. some building? Let's, let's do some. Let's jump right into this. The satisfying rip noise of new cars. Oh, that's so good. It's like people in the collectible car community talk about like new new magic card smell, like that new card smell. In this, it's that wonderful exactly of, like, of a car coming out of its shell. It's like oh, it's breathing air for the first time. I think I think the one thing I've realised with this DeLorean as well, because how it was built, it's got all these body lines already. Like I said about the roof, you can see there's like a T there. You can also see on the bonnet there's a couple of lines. You know, there's there's loads of ways I can tackle this. But like like I said, I think because of the interior is quite open, I might have it closed off. Well, I know I'm going to want to add a person. Um, I've got this wonderful metal framework, so that's going to need a bit of weathering up. I'm tempted to mask over these street wiener decals because they're so cool on the side there like, I love that hot wheels and matchbox they always do great printing like I can't I can't stress that enough if you can save it save it yeah and I've closed it I'm just trying to open it there you go you've actually got this wonderful little it's like a feature. grill it's a grill it's a natural grill it's a natural back. grill so but it, it locks in place so there's the potential to have like a hidden weapon or or a mine dropper or something in there then the back as the work as well like the detail on the engine is it's fantastic like you've got all these wonderful little cogs and gears and pistons and i think those are meant to be like little ketchup and mustard bottles at the back so mm, yeah, interesting it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool but it's got a ram built in you know i don't need to worry about that i am debating of whether to drill drill it out and just see what it feels like underneath um i do have my dremel with me so we might have some hilarious noise very soon so i think I think I might attempt it because I have my uh, what I found. Wonderful advice. I know I found I found this because I lent this. Here we go. Shout out to my good friend Rich, who is uh, a part of the channel. Uh, he lent me this quite a while back because uh, I was doing some work on my war machine parts, which we're not well known for on this mm. channel. Uh, I'm still working on those parts, yeah. uh, and uh, I need to actually give this him back at some point. So uh, I do apologise, Rich. So James, what 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 do you use? Because I use a Dremel. You use a Dremel like a sensible person. Yes, oh, yeah. I love this thing. I, I went into a store, and I'm not going to lie, I went in just to get a toolbox, and I ended up buying a Dremel. I always look at a car and I go, okay, you know, before we even like get a sanding tool on this, what's the plan? And the biggest question is, do I need to drill this open? And for me, I don't need to. I've got all this clear open space. If I want to drop a guy in there, that's a piece of cake, so. Awesome sauce. Lovely. I apologize for the noise. It's, it's quite It's right. gonna be. I'm just gonna open this up. It's like a dentist drill. Obviously, you should Dremel outside, guys, but hey, because of this show, we're doing it inside, which is obviously fun. And also, wear goggles. I don't have goggles, so I'm being a rebel, so yeah. I apologize. All the safety gear goggles, gloves, full welding mask, leather, smart, you know, just, just basically pay someone else to do it for you. Some nice drivers looking there. Oh, yeah. Well, basically what I'm, I'm looking at here, I've got a Ramshackle Games driver, if I can just put it in the camera shot. There you go. Come on, I want to focus. Come on. <laughs> it's, right, it's right there. There you go. Yeah, so a wonderful Ramshackle Games driver, which I've just dropped. Um, that, you know, Curtis, he does some great bits. And they are, they are a great scale for these builds. Um, if you compare that to one of the original Games Workshop Dark Future drivers, like it's, yeah. you know, it, it's night and day. They're so they're so close in scale. Like you wouldn't, 
you wouldn't look at one and go, oh, well, that's completely out, I can't use it. But then I've also got, because you can find bits everywhere, you know, you just have to look. Um, I've got this wonderful Airfix pilot um, that I think came from just like a, I think it was like a, a Spitfire kit or something like that. But he can, you know, potentially, if I make some space, he can just sit in there, you know, he can have a great time and, and drive around and, and sell all the hot dogs to people. <laughs> So over here, I've got the they've got the chassis off, as you can tell. Um, it came off quite easily, um, like like we said as well. Look, it's perfectly yeah, in the middle, which is unfortunate. That's gone straight that's through. That's gone straight through. So um, well, we can we can touch that up in post. No, exactly. No, 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 it's getting no, green no, no, no one will ever post. notice holes. And then obviously we've got the interior yeah. here, which I'm debating on actually keeping because if I'm going to close it all off, yeah, there is actually no point in keeping it no, because exactly. if you're, you're like, gonna, you wouldn't be able to see through exactly. through the interior. And one of the things to always point out is when you look, actually at the moment, yeah, he's go actually got three hands. He's, he's, grown, he's grown a third one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's always worth when you open up cars, just look at what's in the interior. Like look at the, the steering wheel. Is that something you can take off and, and add as a detail somewhere else? Like mm. Look at the chairs. Are they, you know, are they detailed enough to be used on the outside rather than just the inside? Yeah. I would have not thought of that, to be quite frank. Just. Just chuck it all in the bin. Just exactly, really, I would have. Anything is, oh, I'm not going to use this ever, into the track. But you could use that. It's your car at the end of the day, and a lot of there's a lot of stuff circulating at the moment on like, you know, the Gaslands Facebook page of people using cards straight out of the packet and not doing any modifying. That's fine. Like at the end of the day, there there's that many cool cars out there. It, it doesn't matter. You know, you yeah. just want to play the game, play the game. But they're your cars at the end of the day. Don't let someone tell you, oh no, it has to be done like this. Are you thinking diamond plate on the inside or on the outside? Um, uh, definitely on the outside. Measure twice, cuts once, kids. That's what I always say. I think that's what everyone says. You got to relax. You got to learn to relax when you're building. Oh yeah, you're doing the right thing. I can't stress enough, card templates save lives, like they're so good. But yep. at the same time, don't don't focus so much on it that you end up not building anything. But you can just see, it just goes right in. Exactly. So as you can see, I've got it almost there. Like half and half, it pretty much is there. Like, Honestly, it is like literally a small it's, it's hair. It's the best bit, it's the best bit that he's whining about. Anyway, so what I've got, I've got my little driver. I could just stick him in the car straight away, yep. but there's some, you know, sanding bits. I'm gonna be battle damaging this lovely metal part of the front. So there's the risk that if I do that with him in there, I could accidentally sand off his face. So we're not gonna glue him in yet. We'll do that later. I'd laugh so hard if you did, because then he could be like the faceless driver. He'll look like... Um, Frankenstein. He'll look like that guy from... Um, oh, from the, the Robocop film, where he comes out of the nuclear sludge. Oh, yeah! Like, ah, Help, Help me! me. <laughs> Now, anyone that's seen my 15 minute build video can tell you, if you don't do it right, your car's gonna look like this, and it's gonna be constantly scraping its nose across the floor. So you have to you have to look at it first, you have to dry fit it and go, yes, that works, or no, it doesn't, or you need to make some changes. Like I said earlier, my perfectionist is going to kill me on this one, mate. But, as you can see, I've pretty much got the bonnet down, James. We are our own worst enemies. We are. Sorry. So, yeah, I've pretty much got the bonnet down. So, as you can see, the bonnet, I've put it here, and it fits it perfectly. So, what I want to do, more than anything, is just add these lines in here, and maybe that square, and I'm going to put them on top of it. Yeah. So, it just make, gives it that raised profile that someone will be like, oh, okay, he's added that to the bonnet, so it will lift up. So, that's my first little idea for that. Over here, um, as I said, I've taken off the, the rear wheels on the street leaner. Um, I've also added some masking tape, so that's protected now. Um, and I've cut a piece of plastic tube to make a kind of rough and ready axle. Um, it's a real simple technique. You just cut a tube to the correct length. Um, but then we'll be gluing that on, and it should be able to just roll nicely. 
always remember, if the wheels don't turn, it's not a real toy. Yes, He's there's that it. great <laughs> debate, isn't little... it? That that great debate we've had on this, I've seen in the Gaslands community is, Endless do you super glue them <laughs> or do you wheel them? I'm with James on this. It's a toy car. It should move. Yep. Come on. If you, if I can see it on like other games where you don't have them moving and all that stuff, that's fine. But this, we're using toy cars here, guys. We're not using like resin miniatures or anything like that. Right. We need to, we need to keep the car's identity. You know, we need to see where it came from. <laughs> so I've done the the little strips on the side now. Uh, so I'm really happy with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to super glue them on there. Yep. Uh, just get them, get them in place, get them really happy, and be um, be positive about my overall look of my bonnet, which is quite comical. For the first episode, I'm only sticking to one thing, which is the bonnet. Hey, but don't don't swear, man. I'm, exactly. I'm working on a car that looks like a hot dog wiener. Exactly. So we're we're taking it bit by that. bit, and I think it would be fun like to continue these projects, obviously off off air, and then when we come back to do another show or anything like that, we can work on other cars or go back to them, because obviously. Yeah. That's the joys of Gaslands, guys. We've, uh, you can always keep on coming up with... When you see toy cars in windows, you're like, how much is that? A pound? Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah God knows how many times I've spent money on, on, on toy vehicles thanks to eBay and some of the dangerous places where I've looked. Like, like I said in the Bat Report, for example, I'm doing my Sega Warband. I finally got my Sonic and Knuckles car yeah. sorted. And that's taken forever to do due to the fact that I wanted to make it perfect because if you know me, Sonic is one of my biggest games of all time. I know what you're thinking in the comments. Yes, it has gone downhill very rapidly. <laughs> but all of us can remember when we turned on our Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis, if you're American, uh, that we, we played the shit out of Sonic 2. People liked Mario, but... Nah, man. Mario, it was that. Mario's it was, cartoon was garbage. It was. Sonic was you've the, got, was you've the got tip. two. You, you, you basically battle lines were drawn. You either yeah. were Nintendo or Sega. I yeah. never had a Nintendo because my friends had uh, a Nintendo SNES, so I never got it. So my, we got a Mega Drive, and we played the shit out of Sonic. We also played the shit out of like Rocket Knight Adventures and Gunstar Heroes and I'm telling you all this because we're planning on bringing some of that content soon with me and my brother doing stuff. Back in the good old days when you could just go around to a friend's house like... Yeah. It, it, you know, I remember like growing up playing games like Halo 3 or whatever and oh, you man. could go around to a friend's house, hook up a load of TVs and consoles and play like great big 8 or 12 man matches and and you're there with the people, so if someone does some cheesy bullshit, you can like, you know, punch them in the ass. Um, I remember we well, had we had it one time because uh, my parents were away, and uh, we had uh, an Xbox day where basically all my friends would turn up and we played Halo Two. Everyone played Halo Two. If you didn't play Halo Two and you're watching this video, I think you should go out and play Halo Two, or it might be before your time. Um, if you're one of those babby casuals. Yeah, those babby <laughs> casuals. So we, I had my friends turn up and they, they're for, uh, obviously their mums and dads dropped them off with their TV and Xboxes and we had, I believe, one, one, one set up in my room, one set up in my brother's room, one set up in the living room, and one set up in our guest bedroom. And throughout the house when something bad happened, we could honestly hear... Oh, the pen, sorry, there you go. Uh, we could honestly hear someone just yell like, oh, you dick, because we would blow up a Jeep with everyone in it. In new mod five wheels at the back, so we've got that raised profile. Yeah. Um, and I've started putting just caps, just plastic hard caps over the wheels at the front, mm -hmm. because more often than not, people complain that the actual um, hubcap looks cool, but the tire itself is so thin, like mm. it's a street racer, and in the way something you're gonna have more heavy industrial tires. So just by cutting a circle of plastic hard, you can cover over that. And then you're free to like add spikes or blades. I was gonna say them. blades on that would look cool. Yeah, would like, look really cool. It suddenly makes it so much easier. And there are tricks you can do with plastic tubing as well to like make spikes come out of the, the hook cap as well. So, so that's gonna be it's looking really good, dude. It's gonna be pretty fun. But Sweet. We're, we're getting there. We're getting we are getting there. there. So we've got the Delorean. As you can see, the bonnet and the side bits. I basically replicated it. We're in plastic card. So then when we just add it on top like so. It will just basically replicate what the hood is. So I'm debating on adding something here, maybe a turret maybe or something, because we can easily add something to it. But as you can see, it's slowly coming together, which I'm really happy with. And you'll see all sorts. You'll see like people who have used 40K parts, you'll see people who use Airfix parts, 
like myself. <laughs> um, but you'll you'll see a whole range. I mean, one of the best is like when you see people use just like anything. They'll use like toothpicks as as like machine gun barrels and things. And I can I can respect that because it's it's hard to just try and make something from nothing. That is a heavy plasma cannon from 40k. But the first thing I, I look at this is when when you look at it is like sure it looks like a plasma cannon. It's very iconic. But if we put that in the boot sideways there, it's like, cool, you've got a little thing here which could be a thing, but then these things here, I want to put wires out that could go to the fuel bit, so obviously you could have nitrous, and then up yeah. here we can add some more stuff. So that's the majority of the first bit of the boot done. So yeah guys, hopefully um, while you're watching this video, you're leaving comments below, it'll be much appreciated. Uh, tell us uh, some uh, some of the builds you're working on, uh, and tell us uh, tell us ideas that you might want to do. You know, I had an idea when I was uh, rewatching the um, the nineteen eighties uh, Transformers movie, the original cartoon oh, yeah. of doing um, the constructor cons. Yeah. But then I realised if you actually think and break down how big some of those trucks are. Wait, the Constructicons form Devastator, the most powerful robot. We should rule. Constructicons, unite! No way! <laughs> I don't think it could work because I wouldn't be able to do it. Like a giant cement mixer. But that doesn't mean loader. you shouldn't try. Oh no, not at all. I've got ideas for I want to do Sideswipe and I want to yeah. do Sunstreaker from the Autobots. A thousand years ago I was tempted, I was really tempted to do like a, a Gaslands type build using, I kid you not, Power Rangers. Oh wow! And you might immediately think, are you, are you talking like the original show? Actually no, I'm okay. thinking of, um, god what was it called? I think it was called Power Rangers Turbo. Wind Chaser Turbo! But it was the Power Rangers where they drove cars, and, ah! the, and then the cars turned into giant robots. That's cool. It's like, if, if you're super into that kind of stuff, it's like considered the worst of the, the Power Rangers series, but they were cars that turned into robots. I, I, it's pretty funny. You know, you've got you to gotta love that kind of stuff. Here's the the street wiener. So is that what we're going to call it? The street wiener. That's what it's going to have to be. I think the street wiener. I like it. Um, so I've kept a lot of the original details of the model intact. So it's still got its sort of frying pan. Oh, frying pan. It's um, grill spatula. Type. Oh, is that the spatula? That's the spatula and the grills at the back. Wow. So okay. it's still got those elements. Um, I've not glued the lid down. I can still open that up so I can. Put something in there. Cool. Um, taped over the sides with the, the logo so I can protect those and keep those safe during building and painting. Cool. Um, added the, the new kind yeah, of like high impact crazy. wheels, which are really nice, as well as capping over the standard ones so that a little bit of more detail can go into those. A good trick it will be getting like mesh and putting that over them so you do get like a. I still think, even though it would be tedious, would be a. Uh, um, Knives and forks for spiked wheels. <laughs> Damn straight, that would be That cool. would be completely tedious, but it would look cool. Yeah. So what I've done at the back is I've added um, pieces of plastic rod where I've opened up the ends so they look like exhausts. Um, but they could also act like weapons, like they could be mustard oil slick sprayers. So that's really cool. Um, I'm tempted to add a couple more underneath, yep. um, but it just highlights the detail that's already printed on the car itself. Yeah. And I think that's something you should always look out for when you're, you're choosing a car is what's already there? You know, what do I not need to add because it's already a, a feature? Mm. So that's really cool. Cool piece. Yeah. yeah, and the guy looks really good in there as well. The guys turned out really well. One of those ramshackle game guys, like they're just, oh, they're solid. They're just, they, they are like as nice as like some of the old Dark Future yeah. metals. They're the correct size, they've got great proportions. So, you know, some people don't like the resin, but on the drivers, 
they're absolutely fine. And they also, when some of the builds, you, you won't see them fully unless you have like buggies or open top vehicles yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, it just adds a whole new thing to it. Just, yeah, go on. We know we want to open there it. Go. There we go, the so grill. I'm going to have something on there. I think you should just have weapons. Weapons just or something gun, on it. Lots of guns. What I've done is obviously we separated it uh, from, from the actual chassis. Um, and then what we've done is we've made the bonnet. So we basically copied the bonnet from what was underneath on top. So we've got it pretty much in the same proportion. Uh, I was then going to start to work on the back part of it with obviously as we keep mockingly say a heavy plasma cannon but obviously when you add if you have a look at it with all the cables and stuff you can add a lot more to it because you can easily see it could be a nitrous thing which probably this car will have because it's uh, you know when it hits 88 miles per hour hopefully it will run people over um, but yeah as, as you can see from the profile which I wanted to do from the front as you can see um, we need to just add a little bit more to make it fierce, but it is a little bit of a gap here So I might just put spikes on the front of it as well. Yeah. just to give it a bit more of an aggressive stance So with that being said guys, thank you for watching our first episode. Hopefully you've learned something uh, New from this obviously while we've been talking about the products that we're using We've been having them come up on the screen. So hopefully for you first-time builders that has helped you out um, James has started his what what have you actually called it? It's it's the street wiener. The That's street the wiener is what we're gonna call it I don't know. I don't know what I what well, mine's just he it was just a DeLorean wasn't it? But yeah. I don't want to call it that yet So we got the air the name is still up in the air But hopefully if you guys got ideas for it comment in the comments yeah. below tell us some cool ideas but yeah, if you want to be on the, a part of the next episode and uh, you want us to answer your questions, please do uh, leave comments below and leave a like on this. A like is much appreciated. Uh, James's channel is coming up on the screen as well as mine. Uh, James just do tutorial videos and that's where I've learned a little bit of this from. Uh, if you wanted to try any either fun new builds or new techniques or anything, check out his channel. Uh, and we're doing battle reports together. That's the main collab here. Ob obviously with this show, but also with the battle reports we're doing. Uh, we're doing a channel collab to pretty much just tell people that Gaslands is amazing and people should go and do basically play it. Go on, get toy cars. That's basically what we like to say. Uh, so without further ado, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and until next time, take care, have a good one. And yeah, just keep building your toy cars because, uh, yeah, that's it's, what it's, it's all a lot about. of fun. Thank you for watching Wasteland and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.